Hi, Facebook friends. Shernman Chow here in the KHOU 11 Newsroom along with Dr. Gloria Oyeni. And hello. If, hello. If you had just been watching 11 News, you saw that we had done um, today's Be Mindful piece about the benefits of exercise to your mental health. Um, it's actually a very fascinating topic because it's also about how it potentially can change your brain. Right. And we're asking our Facebook friends out there if you've got questions about this to type them in, let us know, because how often do you get a doctor making really a house call for you, yes. answering your direct questions? Um, so, gonna give folks a couple of minutes to go ahead okay. and ask some questions, and I'm gonna grab a, an iPad there so we can kind of monitor those. Sure. But let's talk about that first, which is most people have this, you know, know that exercise and endorphins make you feel better. That's right. But talk to us about kind of the next level benefit of exercise That's to brains. Right. So people know about the endorphins, you know, which is the natural hormones in your body and makes you feel good. Um, we're also learning more that exercise can help, you know, physical conditions, um, preventing chronic disease like diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. heart disease. But there's a lot more evidence and studies showing now that exercising can actually improve your mental health overall. Um, right down to brain science, which is really fascinating when you realize mm -hmm. that we can reduce the rate of anxiety and depression. And um, these studies are even showing that with exercise, it's just as effective as using medications to treat it depression and anxiety. That's that is amazing, and I, and and I, and you know I, I understand that um, that may be something more typical for people with milder cases, depression. Yes. That that can you know uh, be something that acts almost as a substitute for medication. Yes, mild to moderate uh, depression and anxiety syndrome. Yes. Um, and otherwise, maybe more of a supplement to talk therapy and medication. That's correct. And tell us what it does to your brain. Yes. I mean, what is happening <laughs> to the to an organ? Yes. So frequent exercise a week uh -huh. when you exercise four to five times a week, mm -hmm. um, at least uh, 30 to 60 minutes, um, you are increasing the blood flow to your body, but also to your brain. And so because of that, your brain cells have a chance to grow. They uh, maintain their integrity. It reduces inflammation. And then there are certain areas called the hippocampus in your brain, and there are studies that show that those parts of your brain actually can grow as well. And these are parts of the brain that are responsible for emotion and mood and also sleep. And ex you exercise more, it actually improves the growth of these uh, brain cells. And so that in, in turn uh, improves your physical health and you feel the effects on your mood, your energy levels, as well as your sleep. That, that's like crazy, <laughs> right? You, I mean, you're getting oxygen to your brain yes. and you're, um, so if you, so if you'll be able to increase the size, say, of the hippocampus or parts of your brain, um, do studies show us that people who have depression or severe Alzheimer, do they have smaller hippocampuses? Or do, or do we know? So we don't know technically uh -huh. down to that uh, detail, but we do know that when you do exercise over time, mm -hmm. um, it can um, help in the cognition. So mm -hmm. cognitive abilities and focus, concentration, memory, some of these things that are impaired when people that have uh, mm -hmm. depression symptoms, um, also severe anxiety symptoms and things like Alzheimer's. Um, it can wow. slightly reverse the uh, worsening of such conditions. And sometimes, you know, you feel like anything uh, is, a, is a great tool in your, you know, arsenal That's to correct. help improve and fight these things. That is correct. And I apologize, I'm just kind of scanning through, trying to pick up our feed here to see sure. in case you've got any questions. Dr. Yenny's right here, ask them please. So talk about how many, you know, how often, what type of exercise is the most beneficial, do you think? Yes. So there is no correct way to start exercise. I mean, a lot of people who are thinking, well, mm -hmm. I haven't exercised before. I don't have a regular regimen. Do I have to go right to five times a week? Mm -hmm. And I would say just start slow at, at your comfort level. Mm -hmm. The recommendation is that if you want to have um, a, a nice wellness routine as far as fitness, mm -hmm. to exercise at least three to four times a week and, and shoot for five if you can and exercise from uh, 45 minutes to 60 minutes a day just to get your heart rate going. Mm -hmm. um, and you can um, have modalities of aerobic exercise, which mm -hmm. is you know the most common form to get your heart rate up. But there are all different types of exercise and it doesn't have to be formalized. You don't have to join a gym membership, <laughs> even though everyone gets intimidated uh -huh. by you know, having to, to join you know group classes or join uh -huh. the gym. 
Um, you can start with just doing simple gardening or walking mm -hmm. your dog or playing yeah, frisbee with your dog yeah. or, you know, parking a uh -huh. little bit farther away in the, at the parking lot at the mall and walking uh -huh. um, a few extra steps to the door and climbing stairs. These are all just activities to uh, improve, increase your heart rate and get the blood pumping and flowing through your body and also to your brain. And then as you get more comfortable, uh -huh. I do think that there are um, different other modalities that you can go into different types of exercise that you can try. So there's yoga, there's Pilates. There's I do yoga. Fitness classes. <laughs> yoga is such <laughs> a transformative type of exercise uh -huh. to do just for the meditative mm -hmm. qualities that it has in relaxation and stretching um, and getting your muscles to bend and yield mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, it also does good for the heart and brain. And so it is a form of exercise that works well for a lot of people and has had mm -hmm. um, a lot of studies now shown that it can be beneficial for mental health. Yay. All right. I yeah. thought I felt better. <laughs> I guess I do feel better. <laughs> Give me one second. Hey, um, Miss M, Emily, Miss M, I'm calling one of our, uh, our digital producers over because I need her help here. I think my iPad here has frozen up a little bit. I okay. can't get the... Get the questions uh, Yes, going. the comments are... Uh, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. Can you help me? I don't know why I can't get access to the, the I can't access the questions to the comments. So we don't want to shortchange our of Facebook course. friends because they've got <laughs> some questions, no doubt, or some comments. So yes. we want to be able to get through to them. So that's uh, so the kind of exercise that makes you sweat can change potentially actually change the physiology of your brain. That is correct. Because as you uh -huh. exercise, the blood is mm -hmm. pumping. Only to, not only to your body, but also to your brain. And that blood flow is increasing the amount of oxygen going into the brain. And so the brain is working out, to say, <laughs> the very <laughs> least. Uh, but those brain cells actually get a chance to replenish and rejuvenate. Um, and it protects the cell growth, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. it protects the cell integrity and fosters cell growth. And what we call mm -hmm. the neurogenesis. So uh, the brain cells are called neurons. And so mm -hmm. neurogenesis in, in the formation of new cells in the brain. And this is actually uh, a potential aid for memory loss to, to kind of battle the memory loss problem. Yes. So it can help with cognition, focus, memory uh, impairment, and mm -hmm. slowing down memory impairment. And so people who mm -hmm. have cognitive deficits mm -hmm. uh, in schizophrenia oh, so or Alzheimer's, dementia, mm -hmm. um, exercise has shown to help slow down the progression mm -hmm. of those uh, conditions. And that was the question from Joe about whether or not exercise can improve memory as well. And it can. Yeah. It can. And so for a lot of uh -huh. um, mental health conditions that have symptoms that impair memory, so uh, depression mm -hmm. symptoms actually can have some components where people's focus is impaired, they can't concentrate as much, their memory is impaired. Same thing with some anxiety disorders, mm -hmm. uh, some thought disorders like schizophrenia, mm -hmm. some cognitive disorders like dementia, and all of these things exercise can help. It actually can improve uh, the focus, concentration, impairment, and memory. So let's see, so if my kid has a test on Wednesday, <laughs> should I make him run Monday and Tuesday while he's, you know, reciting different formulas or Actually, historical facts to yes, himself. I would really? say that anything <laughs> that improves the blood flow to the brain and to uh -huh. the body cannot hurt. And it can actually help you focus and, and, and make your attention uh, uh -huh. increased. That is correct. All righty. He's going to love to hear that, yes. that he gets to do his homework <laughs> while he's exercising. And also, <laughs> you know, enjoy the physical benefits of exercise, too. So uh -huh. he's going to get a good night's rest because he's exercising. Mm -hmm. So his brain's going to be able to replenish when he's mm -hmm. sleeping. His body's taking care of itself. And then he's going to wake up the next day feeling refreshed, feeling relaxed, um, not as anxious. Um, hopefully not as overwhelmed because he prepared and studied. Yes, but then his hope. brain is also <laughs> alert and attentive and ready to go and tackle that test. Y you know, that's a, uh, <laughs> you laugh, but that is yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Karen, by the way, is just kind of saying hi from Friendswood. So hello, Karen. Hi, Glad Karen. you're joining us. Uh, let's see, Kyle is saying, yep, exercise improves everything. And ain't that the truth? That is correct. The, the other thing, which may seem sort of obvious, but of course, you know, if you're exercising, your, you know, your whole physical self, your physique is probably, uh, you know, correct. a little bit better. And uh, you, I've heard doctors say, well, you look better, you feel better. That's There's correct. probably some to that too. So uh -huh. we know already that exercise has so many physical benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only in the fact that it's reversing uh, the manifestation of chronic conditions, but you know, it boosts your energy. Mm -hmm. It boosts how you feel about yourself and your confidence. It can aid in weight loss. Mm -hmm. It can trim your physique so yep. you feel better about yourself. There you go ahead. It yep. can improve your sex life. 
it can improve Hey, your this is a family show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you. You know, it can help uh -huh. you sleep better at night. And mm -hmm. so overall, really, there are a lot of physical benefits that you feel as you implement um, um, phys uh, exercise into your daily routine. Mm -hmm. And now, you, and I know I'm kind of biased because um, I do some yoga. That's obviously not aerobic exercise. Yeah. So how does that help you improve your outlook, your mental health? The aerobic exercise, you mean? Or oh, the yoga. Clarify? The yoga. The yoga. I uh -huh. see. So um, yoga is a form of exercise where you're doing mm -hmm. a lot of stretches, but you're meditating as well. And studies have also shown in addition to mm -hmm. uh, your heart actually is pumping when you, sometimes you're doing a lot of these mm -hmm. exercises. Okay. It can be physically challenging. And so well, that's blood definitely is, true. <laughs> your blood is pumping. And so no, you're not getting it as maybe um, it's not going as fast or as rapid uh -huh. as you would with some other exercises like sprinting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but your heart, blood, uh, your um, mm -hmm. Your heart is pumping and the blood flow is going to your brain. But not only that, you're learning meditative mm -hmm. uh, uh, techniques, techniques and, and relaxation techniques as well. Mm -hmm. And that also has an added benefit because then you're trying to quell any type of anxiety, you're helping to control your emotions, mm -hmm. and you're kind of, kind of uh, uh, processing that and letting all of that out. And so it's actually a, a, a double benefit, I would say, with yoga specifically. Wow. All righty, I'm going to keep those classes <laughs> going. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. But, you know, I was uh -huh. saying earlier that for exercising uh -huh. that some people might not feel comfortable joining groups and wanting yeah. to go to the gym. I will say that there is a benefit in being able to have a partner or to exercise with someone. Mm -hmm. um, studies have shown, especially for people who tend to isolate and want to keep to themselves. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's great initially if you want to, you know, exercise by watching something on TV or get into videos and all of that. But if you're able to have fun by doing this yeah. and doing this outward with pe uh, outdoors with people, there's a extra benefit of just having companionship the and, socialization. and the socialization of that exactly and increased socialization is always good for your mental health right you're in a community you feel mm -hmm. supported and so you can never go wrong with doing that and so exercising if you do by yourself is great but doing with others is even better don't don't be shy don't right be shy. <laughs> and there's a lot of support groups uh, for people who want to link up with people mm -hmm. you don't have to know um, or, mm -hmm. or do it with a family, no people are doing it with family, and so you can use social media as a tool uh, mm -hmm. to connect with others or join uh, group mm -hmm. fitness classes. Um, just so you know, other shy people who don't want to be with others can come together <laughs> and exercise and have fun while doing it. That's right. Uh, the good use of social media, That's right? right? That's right. That's um, right. So Nancy is asking um, for those who have physical limitations or even an injury, are there some solutions for getting those endorphins going, for feeling better? That what is would correct. Um, I would hope that for those that have physical limitations that they are working with their doctors mm -hmm. and coming up with a wellness plan. There should be recommendations made for whether formalized physical therapy mm -hmm. where they would come up with specific exercises that you can do, mm -hmm. but if not, they would recommend things that you can do at home to isolate certain body parts that need to be worked on mm -hmm. or even just things that you can do to get your heart rate going. Yes, there are specific exercises for those as well. All right. So talk to your doctor or that your physical correct. therapist to find out what's manageable for you where you are that is correct in your health and your life for example a lot mm -hmm. of people can't do weight bearing exercises mm -hmm. and so there might be a component of aqua therapy that is recommended oh. and so you get into the swimming mm -hmm. pool and you can get your heart rate going up even in the pool mm -hmm. and there are a lot of exercises that you can do there you know with the assistance of um, a staff member or someone that mm -hmm. can help to make sure that you're doing it safely uh, but there, there should be no limitations, honestly, with physical conditions. You, there's a way to get mm -hmm. people to exercise. You know, I have seen um, on the road, uh, they look like bikes on the, well, they're not really bikes, but they're like gliders. Ah. Um, and, you know, they're kind of, but they're Out going the down. Yeah, yeah, on the sidewalk. Uh -huh. And I guess it's to help maybe people who have knee issues, don't want to, you know, be pounding, That's running. That's very cool, yeah. Uh, but it seems like that must also be, you know, a way to accommodate yes. potential limitations so you can get outdoors, get exercise, that is uh, correct. but you're not, you know, pounding. Yeah, your Just knees like having an elliptical thing. machine versus getting on the treadmill yeah, and yeah. you're pounding on the knees. There's a lot uh -huh. of um, equipment now that people can use, modified mm -hmm. equipment, just to make sure that, you know, we're not um, aggravating certain, you know, trigger spots in the body. And so, again, there are tons of exercises that people can do. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want a physical uh, ailment to be a barrier for someone being mm -hmm. able to really boost their mental health mm -hmm. through exercise. You know, and I, I'll just share a quick note. So my husband's mother, who is, I think she'd be okay with me telling you this, she is <laughs> 89 years old. Wow. Yeah, and she actually had some bad back surgery last year. But she mm -hmm. does Pilates. And, I mean, She's 89 and wow. she does Pilates and she has a personal that trainer. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, now she's not running a marathon, <laughs> but um, she uh, just has the best and sweetest nature. And, uh, you know, I presume 
you know, I'm sure part of that is a genetic component. Right. But she is active. She is getting exercise. Right. And, and she's 89 years old. She has wow. a titanium back. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and Pilates is a really great way uh -huh. to um, get your muscles, to, mm -hmm. you know, to stretch and do some resistance training. But it also will get your your heart pumping. Mm -hmm. She <laughs> and sweats. And it's still working yeah. on getting oxygen uh -huh. to the brain. Yeah. And so again, people feel that sometimes exercise looks like you have to be up and jumping around and dancing and uh -huh. sprinting, and that's not necessarily the case. There are lots of exercises, even um, doing Pilates or yoga, mm -hmm. where there are more stationary exercises that can get your heart pumping. moving. Exactly. So again, that mm -hmm. is the goal, is to get the blood flow to the brain. And then uh, one more question, I think we'll probably be winding it down after this, but is there a psychological benefit from the sense of accomplishment of working out? Seems like, yeah. That's exactly what those endorphins are. <laughs> <laughs> They're like going, those Yay, endorphins good job, after yes. and you feel really good. And uh -huh. it's actually, it's, I mean, it's, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a psychological feeling. You feel good, mm -hmm. but then physically your body feels really good afterwards. I know people, mm -hmm. they work out and they're done. I was like, that was a really good workout. I mean, your muscles might be sore the next day mm -hmm. <laughs> and saying, ouch, but your brain is thanking you for that because it knows that there are going to be long-term benefits to doing this. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I tell patients, um, you might not be able to exercise three to four times a week, but just start somewhere. If you want to start one day a week, and mm -hmm. it's a two days a week, and then three days a week, uh, 30 minutes at a time, go walking, mm -hmm. and then go to running, or whatever else. But your brain, when you start doing this, after about four weeks, you should start seeing effects on wow. your mental health. So it's a it's a pers part it's of a the prescription, prescription. And like it's part of your wellness plan, That's like exactly a, a right. pill you might take That's or talk right. therapy you might do. It That's is right. part of the prescription, exactly. part of the therapy. It's part of prescription, uh -huh. just like nutrition is just as important, uh -huh. right. right? And so I feel like if they're able to focus on uh -huh. the nutritional health and their exercise, just getting fit, moving around, getting your blood pumping and getting oxygen to your brain, that's gonna do your body and your brain so much good in the long term in improving your mental health. Okay, all right, <laughs> really no more excuses. No more excuses, <laughs> join right. a community. Uh -huh. um, over at the Menninger Clinic where I work, we have mm -hmm. a lot of patients there and we are really trying to incorporate wellness and exercise into part of their daily uh, mm -hmm. regimen. And so we have a pool, we have a gym, we have fitness oh. consultants and all of that just to help them. We have mm -hmm. a labyrinth for meditation to make sure that they're mm -hmm. getting their heart racing and blood going to their brain. Because, you know, I think medications and therapy are a very critical component for mm -hmm. severe mental illness, but exercise should be as well. All right, excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Gloria Oyeni with the Menninger Clinic. Thank you so much thank for coming for and joining us. Me talking us about and I guess you know what just kind of revving us up and That's inspiring right. us right. to go out and get some exercise. Improve your brain health via <laughs> exercising. That is right. Your body and your brain will thank you. There you go. Two first. <laughs> right. Thanks very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank right. you. Thank you. We'll see you next time Facebook friends. Thank you. Ciao. Bye bye. Bye. Yep. Ooh. Good. Yeah. Let me go ahead and turn us off here uh, if I know how. Um, let's see.